ठीक है भाई थम्स अप दे दे ठीक है रोलिंग हाय गाइस आई एम डॉक्टर मारवा सर आपने बोला ओ थैंक यू सर हाय आई एम डॉक्टर राजा ठीक है ठीक है फिर से करते हैं ओके सर ठीक है रोलिंग ठीक है मैं बोल देता हूं सर वो बस बोल रोलिंग सो एडिटिंग टीम आप कोई ब्लूपर्स यूज नहीं करते ठीक है और हम दोबारा से रिकॉर्डिंग कर रहे हैं थिंक इट्स गुड दिस इज मच बेटर दिस इज मच बेटर Hi guys this is Dr Marwa Hello friends this is Dr Azam here and we are here to today talk about a those are three with me. Hi guys this is Dr Marwa Hello friends this is Dr Azam here and we are here to today talk about a important concept of widows artery which is left anterior descending artery and this single blood vessel is responsible for development of a large number of deaths not only in india and abroad us doctors would be aware that single leading cause of death in both india and america happens to be coronary artery disease slash ischemic heart disease so we going to dive a little more deeper into this topic and our objective would be to talk more about the nitty gritties of how the coronary circulation would be contributing to development of various types of myocardial infarction now uh, as far as the ecg findings are concerned it's like right in your face i mean just look at the huge st segment elevation that is present in this case which is also referred as a tombstone pattern in fact either we can call it tombstone or we can call it a party sign and these findings would be present in lead number v1 to v4 for anterior wall myocardial infarction in fact from your exam perspective obviously you need to focus on lead number 2 3 avf as well because when we come to the right coronary artery i'll add more inputs for that but at this juncture what i want to bring to your attention is specifically that if you are getting the changes in v1 to v4 it means that it's the involvement of the widow's artery and that heralds a poor prognosis so now my dear friends to understand like what is the clinical aspects about this one you need to understand the basics about this one that how this coronary arteries are placed from where are they going to originate and how are they actually traveling so that you can easily understand what is this anterior wall mi which artery will be involved in the inferior wall mi in this manner fine so sir will actually put a light on to that one i'll tell you the basics of this one so first of all when you're learning about the coronary circulation you should know that the coronary arteries are going to begin from where remember the coronary arteries are going to begin from aortic sinus got to remember this word aortic sinus and aortic sinuses remember that there will be like anterior aortic sinus and then there will be posterior aortic sinus there'll be one anterior and there'll be like two posterior because we have got like two posterior one will be right posterior another one is the left posterior now from this table you can click quickly learn learn here that anterior aortic sinus is the one which will give rise to right coronary artery left posterior aortic sinus will be the one which will give rise to left coronary artery and nothing arises from the right posterior therefore it is known as the non coronary sinus now once you have learned here let me give you a quick update here that aortic sinuses at the very beginning of the aorta so this one here will be the anterior aortic sinus and this one here will be the two posterior one is right posterior another one will be the left posterior so as i told you anterior aortic sinus is the one from where right coronary artery is going to begin and left posterior is the one from the left coronary artery is going to begin and let me give you one of the latest update from the 42nd edition of gray's anatomy that nowadays right coronary artery is going to begin from anterior aortic sinus fine and then left coronary artery they are directly using the word as left aortic sinus instead of left posterior left aortic sinus so so these updates are actually going to help our students a lot here sir. absolutely that's brilliant i mean you guys are getting uh, the latest updates from grace anatomy and that's really uh, information that needs to be imprinted in uh, your brain perfect sir and then once you have learned the origin of this one the course and the branches the one which are trying to emphasize on this one anterior interventricular artery it comes from where if you look at this diagram from the gray's anatomy you will actually go mad like learning all these branches are coming from where let me give you a simple diagram here so now you all know very well how the heart is placed in our body our heart is actually like a fallen cone here and this will be the right border then the inferior border and this is the left border now imagine that this is actually the ascending aorta beginning from here and at the very beginning of this ascending aorta you'll be having aortic sinuses now as i told you there will be one anterior and then there will be like two posterior so imagine this is anterior and this is the right posterior and this is the left posterior now from the left posterior begins the left coronary artery and left coronary artery is shorter and it is wider in length it is more thicker 
then this is going to give rise to like two branches one will be the circumflex artery here the one which is going to take a turn and go back here this is known as circumflex artery and another one will be the one which is going to descend down and then take a turn here and this is the one which will be referred to as interventricular artery because you can see very clearly in this diagram here it is between the two ventricles and present anteriorly that is the reason why it is a i v a anterior interventricular artery and the same artery it is also known as the l a d artery so that is left anterior descending artery very meaningful name it's coming from the left coronary artery that is why left present anteriorly anterior descending down left anterior descending artery and this is the one which is referred to as widower's artery and yes we have our legendary faculty along with us who is going to put a light on this one well this is just a precious blood vessel is what i can say because what you will see sir very soon doing is uh, creating anastomosis in the posterior wall of the heart you will notice that there would be two blood vessels in the posterior surface so the chances of a person dying due to a posterior wall mi would be relatively lesser as compared to a anterior surface infarction and subsequently one sir has provided his anatomical inputs for the posterior circulation and the right coronary artery then we're going to talk about uh, what's going to happen if it's a proximal lad occlusion and what's going to happen if it's going to be a distal lad occlusion so now let me tell you about the right coronary artery as i said you it begins from the anterior aortic sinus and this is actually going to take a turn around the inferior border of the heart and this right coronary artery is going to form an anastomosis with the circumflex artery from the other side now while taking a turn it will give a branch along this margin here that is referred to as your right marginal artery or else it is also known as the acute artery right marginal artery or acute artery but the one which is more of importance here clinical importance here after going back here onto the posterior surface right coronary artery will also give a branch and that branch again the same thing it is present between the two ventricles here that is why the name is interventricular artery and this is posterior interventricular artery and you can very clearly see in our diagram here it is going to form anastomosis with the anterior interventricular artery and that is of great clinical importance yes sir well uh, what i can say at this particular juncture is that do not neglect lead number 23 avf in the mcqs because lots of time in the exam they may not be giving you the classical tombstone pattern that i'm talking about in the anterior leads that is from v1 to v4 and you'll notice the changes would be present in 23 avf another point that i want to add at this moment is uh, that if it's going to be a proximal lad occlusion then it's going to be a extensive anterior wall mi which casually you will see like a doctor telling family members that the person has had a massive heart attack so that so called massive heart attack is going to be a proximal lad or just you can see the blood vessel where it's originating from the left side that's the left main coronary artery in, in fact the occlusion would be proximal lad that's uh, the extensive part if it's a distal then it would be called as classical anterior wall myocardial infarction perfect sir so from here my dear students what we are trying to convey here you can clearly see here how the basic sciences are really important for you if you understand this anatomy conceptually here and in our main videos we are also going to learn anatomy with the help of like beautiful diagrams like this so that it is also going to help you in the prop exam not only that the, the thing which is being asked in the exams nowadays the need of the r is that integrating the subjects clinically is very much important so you can see the underlying basics are very much important to understand the clinical concepts here so i hope this will surely help you a lot thank you thank you guys and if you and me and you and us are on the same frequency do comment in the box below just to check out your recall memory which blood vessel will be occluded if the person is having a extensive anterior wall mi options before you are proximal part of lad slash a distal part of lad absolutely fine so we are waiting for your comments over there thank so you so all the best happy learning thank you